What's up guys, welcome back to Hippo Supercoach and today we're going to be doing a top trade targets video. Um, we're going to talk about my trades in a second, but for now we're just going to talk about the most traded in that aren't in my team. Do a quick talk about them, then we're going to jump into who I think the best trade targets are, in, are on each line. And then we're going to do about, we're going to talk about my trades. So yeah, stay tuned and let's get into it. So most traded in not in my team, so Brody Grundy, I think it's just a temporary pick. I wouldn't be bringing him in. It's one good game. I don't even rate him that highly, to be honest. Um, he did get dominated by Darcy Fort last week, and he was the sole ruck. So, Grundy's one I wouldn't be jumping on. I think there's a bit of trap written over that. And as soon as Gorn comes back, he's probably going to go back to being shit. Tim English, he's one that we kind of need to get in. Um, we're sort of just hoping on an injury, as messed up as that is. I think we need him to go down, or we need him to drop it or something, because he's just the way he's playing right now, it's just pig-like. Like, he's stat padding so hard and getting to the back line to get all those cheap touches. So, <clears throat> I think he's one <coughs> Sorry. that we'll have to get in at some point. But um, it's just a matter of how we get him in because, like, most of us already have rucks that are doing relatively good. I mean, Marshall's not doing amazing, but I don't really want to sideways into English. Um, we saw what happened when people sideways Darcy to Darcy Cameron and Darcy Cameron got hurt. So, it's not something I want to do. And I, I think I'll just keep my trades for that for now and just hope English eventually goes down. Will Phillips, well, if he's named, he probably has to come in, which is a bit of a headache for a lot of teams, mine included. I just think, like, he's just, I don't know, he got plenty of CBAs, the role's there, it's just, is the job security there? That's the only question mark with him. I think he's actually a pretty good player too. Wouldn't we bring in Liam Baker? I think that's a trap. And then Van Bruggen, if you want to go a week early on him, I don't think that's the worst thing. He's playing West Coast this week, so he should go pretty big. Um, all right, let's jump into some players that I think are the best trade targets. So on the back line, if you don't have Nick Dacos by now, you probably need him. And it's because like his numbers are just too good. He's gone 129, 149, 109. I think he averages 120 this year, to be honest. And 547, he's still a relatively good price. I wouldn't be trading at Sam Doherty. Now, obviously, we all know his stat line. It's absolute bullshit that he didn't score higher, but... Don't be too alarmed with Doherty. Like, he'll, he'll be fine. I'm really not worried about him at all. McGovern, obviously, you have to trade out if you have him. It really sucks when these pods get injured. It, like, it really sucks. Like, it's one thing for a you know, uh, for a common pick to get injured, but then when it's a pod, it just really cooks you. So having Steele and McGovern go down the last two weeks is really fucked with my team. Anyway, we will bounce back. Um, so, yeah, in the back line, I would say if you're going to try and get a primo in, it's got to be either Nick Dacos or Tom Stewart. Now, Tom Stewart's break-even is 161, and he's gone 169 or whatever he went this week. I think if you want to get him now, it's not a bad idea at all. Um, so, it's something that I'm definitely considering, and wait to see my trades, and he might be in there. So, Stewart or Dacos wouldn't really think talk about any other primos. If you had to bring in a rookie, the only rookie that's really optional is that Tyler Young guy, but I don't like his job security. Like apparently when Broad comes back, he's gonna go straight back out anyway, so. Yeah, Tyler Young, minus 27 break even, it's not bad, but I mean, you'd be sort of scraping at the bottom of the barrel for this, and if you absolutely need to, you can do it. I'd rather use DPP and bring in like a Van Ruyen or a Will Phillips, but I could see a, a situation where I would maybe do that. Um, in the midfield, so the first guy we have to talk about is Clayton Oliver. Now, the reason being, I mean, he's just absolutely picking. He's a captain option, and he's in a lot of teams. So 42% of teams, that's really hurting. It's really, really hurting a lot of teams that don't have him, and it's hurting me. So I have to bring Clayton Oliver in probably this week and just got to get that sort of captain option back because Neil and... I thought Neil and Bond could go with him, but it just hasn't turned out that way. So frustrating. Um... But you know what, whatever, we, there's, there's still a lot of time left in the season, so one thing that it seems like everyone's doing is we're sort of giving up a bit, not giving up, but losing hope, um, I thought, don't think we're going to do that, I, I looked at my team and I was like 15,000 ranked after round 6, and I ended up finishing around the 800 mark, so um, just remember a lot of teams will, a lot of these top teams and a lot of teams will drop off, and especially later in the season, if we can hold some trades, that those top teams are going to drop hard and those last few rounds, all the teams that have trades are going to have a massive, massive jump because they're not going to get donuts. So play the long game. Just remember it's not a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So yeah, I wouldn't be losing hope just yet. 
and I've got reason to lose hope. I mean, I had Tanner Bruin, I had two injured, two injured primos. Um, Wanganin Malaria didn't work out. Ashes barely worked out. Um, so yeah, it's 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 not the worst. It's it's really not the worst. I don't know Laird Oliver, but trust me, you have to stay optimistic because there's plenty of time to come back. Anyway, Clayton Oliver is probably the number one trade target I have in the midfield. The other one is Luke Davis Uniaki. Now I think it's it's tempting me to go him instead of Oliver. At this point, I'm probably going to go towards Oliver. But obviously, the two scores, 143 and 155, not the best opposition being West Coast and Freo. Um, I don't know much about his outside game. So if someone wants to let me know, is he actually much of a stat pad? Does he go for those cheapies in the back line? Because if he does, that's going to appeal to me a little bit better. So Carlton, Brisbane, Gold Coast, Melbourne, St. Kilda. He doesn't really have... He has Gold Coast. That's pretty much the only easy game in there. I think he can definitely go big. I just don't know if he can quite match Oliver. And at this point, I need Oliver's captaincy scores. So that's probably what's going to stop me from getting LDU. But I still think if you want to go for that value option, this is the week you got to get him. So, and natural progression. I mean, the kid might go... He could go 120, 125. I wouldn't surprise me at all. He's obviously a jet. Reminds me of like Chris Judd. So I, I think, yeah, just... It's, if, you, if you want to jump on him, this is the way to do it. And it's a big 50-50, this Oliver versus, Oliver versus LDU one. Um... But I think I'm gonna. St- I think I'm gonna go with Clary. Um, on the ruck, obviously English is the only one I'd be thinking about bringing in. I really wouldn't bring in Brody Grundy. Oh, if there's any midfielders rookies you need, obviously Will Phillips. Just grab Will Phillips. Um, yeah. So I don't think any ruckmen should be talked about besides Tim English. Wits is doing really nicely. Happy with him. Really, really happy I started Wits. I was confident in him, but you know, it's one thing to be confident and another thing for it to actually work out. So yeah, happy with that. And then Roel Marshall, well, he is, at this point, I've got bigger problems in my team to tra- than to trade him. I do like going Marshall to English. I think that's a really good option. Um, but yeah, I, unfortunately, I just have to hold Rowan for now and maybe one or two more weeks and then he'll get sideways to English, provided I have the cash. So, wait and see with that one. But I think if you absolutely had to, I think it's, it's a good option to either hold Marshall or English. Or trade English. I don't think you can really lose. The only way you can lose is if English gets injured. Um, Radigalia is doing pretty average. So he's going to be a slow cash burn if he stays in the team. Forward line. Um, I think the best forward to bring in this week would have to be... I mean, Connor Rosie had a really good game. And relatively low disposals. And still scored quite well. So 523k, the price is still pretty reasonable. 82 break even, um, probably goes up about 10k this week, but he has a good game. I think Rosie is a good option to bring in if you need to bring in a forward, but at this point, it just seems like everyone's got a decent forward line. Um, Zebra will bounce back, don't worry about him. If you do want to bring in Zebra this week, I would do it still. Um, 401k, he's gone at what, 60k, 50k? I think he's still a really good option to bring in. So, yeah, consider that. Um, and then if you need a rookie, obviously it's got to be Van Ruyen. The reason being, he's got West Coast this week and he played really well against Sydney last week. So yeah. Now let's get into my trade. So I'm fortunate to have 401k in the bank. I said I was going to do part two on the night, but I just really lost motivation. I was like, I don't want to think about Supercoach. I don't want to talk about Supercoach. I'm done. I'm checked out. I'm not really, I wasn't really checked out, but for that night I was. Um, so obviously McGovern has to go. <clears throat> and the other one we're going to get rid of is Wangan and Malera. And the other one we're going to get rid of is, I think, Liam Jones. I think we're going to get rid of Liam Jones. What we're going to do is we're going to sub Constable up and we're going to sub Davey up. So we're going to field either Constable or Wilmot. Now, obviously, we have a bit of cash to play with. So the first forward we're going to bring in is, if we filter by break, break even, we can bring in big, bad Jacob Van Ruggen. So he's going to sit on the bench. Um, I think he'd be a decent field option this week. But yeah, for me, he'll be on the bench. And then we're going to go ahead and grab. This is where it gets interesting because we have 1.3 mil to grab two primos. So we'll start off round three points. You know what? <laughs> we're just going to grab the top two, two guys, Oliver and Tom Stewart. And it gives us 2.3k remaining. But I think these trades are really, they're going to make my season a lot better. I think Stewart's a lock for top. I, I said he was a trap as a starting pick, but it seems like he's probably not going to get that attention that we thought, which is good. Um, and being like having an injury, I just feel like teams will be like sort of cool on him a bit. They might not. They might. They might tag him. Um, Hawthorne 
I don't think they'll send McGuinness to him. They might, but I, I don't think so. So we'll wait and see with that one. Um, but yeah, I think for now, Tom Stewart's got to come in. Clayton Oliver has to come in. And then, yeah, Van Ruyen, I'm happy to have on the bench. And go a week early on him because he does play West Coast, who have a really, really depleted team. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. Let me know what trades you guys think uh, I should do or what trades you guys are doing. I'm more than happy to get to the comments. Um, and in terms of captain, vice captain, I think it's got to be uh, Neil into Oliver or Bont into Oliver. It's got to be one of them. So, Bont plays the Tigers. It might actually be a Bont into Oliver, to be honest. I really don't trust Lockie Neil anymore, which is kind of sad. So, yeah, so Bont into Clary. And then we'll use Bytalis the loop. If Bytalis is still out. Actually, might not have a loop this week, which wouldn't be the worst thing. I think I'm happy having Oliver just because it's that straight C. I trust him every week to pump out at least a 110. So, yeah, they're the trades. Hopefully, Hopper plays this week. If not, it's not the end of the world. Back can come on. But, yeah. And then Wilmot will probably play. Uh, if Constable's named, I'd rather field Constable just because he's got more of a cheesy role than Wilmot. So, yeah. But really happy with the way the team looks now after these trades. Obviously, I only got 30 trades left. But I'm not too uh, unhappy about that. The next week or two, it'll just be... I'll be sitting on this team. I won't need to do any more trades because there's not going to be enough cash then to make any moves. The only one I'll consider is maybe doing like an... Radigalia down and uh, Fergus Green down and going Marshall to English, but that would be pretty, that'd be a bit of a waste of trades, but who knows, and the way this season's going with all the injuries and whatnot, you just don't know what's going to happen next, so um, yeah, they're my trades, they're the best trade targets for this week in my opinion, and uh, good luck with the round, and I'll probably see you on the Thursday or Friday night for the teams.